Hey there, Absolutely Gospel uh, readers, fans, uh, viewers. Uh, now that we are uh, back, we are so excited to be here with uh, Miss Kelly Crabb. Uh, of course, you Hi. guys know her. Uh, she has been in uh, doing this thing for a long time, of course, with the Crab family. Now she's out on her own and her daughters are with her and we're so excited. How are you doing today, Kelly? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, I, I We got to talk a little bit before uh, before we hit record. And, um, uh, and I was filling Kelly in on the fact that I have always been a Kelly fan. Um, and, uh, and so I'm just so excited that we get to talk about this new recording and a new book um, and to see Kelly step out on her own. So um, Kelly, you know, for those who aren't familiar, I don't know how they can't be, but those who aren't familiar, um, give us a little bit uh, a background uh, of your background uh, in, in the music industry. So I've spent most of my, lots of my life on tour with um, my family, the Crab family. Um, we started out with our parents back in I think like 1990, I'm going to age myself, date myself here. Uh, back in about 1996, um, my siblings and my parents, and then we, um, the siblings kind of took over somewhere in the early 2000s. And we spent many, many years um, traveling and singing as a family. So that I'm one of the siblings of the Kraft family. And I've, I've been on the road singing since I was 16 years old, full time. And I'm yeah. certainly not 16 anymore. So for a long time. <laughs> I understand that. It's funny because um, my family um, started promoting in the Memphis area uh, back in the late 90s. And one of the first groups we brought in was the Crab family. And of course, wow. it came out of the woodwork to, to see you guys. Um, uh, the acoustics were horrible. We were in an old, uh, we were in a gymnasium at a middle school. And of course, the acoustics were horrible, but it was just a great time. And I always remember uh, my dad at that time said, you know, these guys are going places. They are, they are going to be the next big thing. And of course, uh, no truer words were spoken, right? I mean, you guys have been everywhere and done everything. Um, and so, uh, you know, but first of all, we want to talk about this, uh, this new era you're in, this new step into ministry that you are, you, that you are in now. And so uh, just tell us a little bit about, um, uh, about the new record, about the new book, um, and give, give us the lowdown of what, what you've got coming. Well, first of all, I want to say your family always kind of, your your parents always believed in our family and you you kids as well. And we've never forgotten that. I mean, you don't forget the first people when no one really believes in you that truly believe in you. So I want to say that we've always loved and appreciated your family and nev you never forget that. Um, so anyway, but with that being said, it is a very much a new season for me um, to kind of be... Um, a little bit in solo ministry my girls travel and sing with me but um but I, I did a so you know this is a solo record a solo album and the girls are sort of their own thing we're together combined but yet they're their own thing so um I went through a really um if you know me you know that I went through a really a rough season in the past 20 months and I wrote a book um about that season and this album just kind of correlates with the book I'd been wanting to do a solo record of songs that um, kind of made me who I am. You know, it was, it's sort of songs that molded me and made me want to sing and, and built my faith even as a kid growing up. And, um, and the book is definitely meant to be a faith builder. So this it, it's a new season, but and it's a season I never thought I would be in. I've never really aspired to be a soloist ever. I love my there's nothing I love more than kind of being a great support system for someone like right behind them kind of cheering them on. But God usually makes a step right out of our comfort zone. That's usually the way he works. So it's an exciting season, um, but clearly one I would have never thought would be for me. But God has a way of turning the hardest situations around and using us right in the middle of a brokenness, a broken place. So um, it's it's been exciting to see how God can kind of use anything. His Lordship was there in your life. And so um, it's just it's just been so great. I've been watching, of course, clips of you preaching almost, you know, at stronger <laughs> events and, uh, you know, singing the house down. And, and that's what I really like about the record is that uh, it, can, it covers so many uh, different areas and different venues that you can go into. Like uh, you've got, you know, traditional hymns, uh, that you could sing at First Baptist in Mississippi. 
you know, you could go into a Pentecostal church and, and tear the house down with your Jesus medley. And then that first track, like I was expecting, there's a new name written down, in, you know, but it was yeah. just awesome, you know, inspirational, uh, upbeat, great new song. And so, um, you know, uh, it, it's just, it, it hits all the right notes that it needs to. It hits all the right beats, you Thank know. You. So I know you worked with Blaine Johnson, of course. Yeah. Um, uh, a lot of people will know who Blaine is. Uh, is a terrific musician. Uh, so what was it like working with Blaine uh, on this record? Well, Blaine is like family, you know, on a personal level, he's, he's family. I've known him for probably 15 years or so. He's toured with the Crab family on almost every tour. You know, we, the Crab, my family still does the tour every year where we kind of do 12 dates a year. And so Blaine's usually right in the middle of that, um, musically uh, plays piano and he's on tour with me, um, right now and, and has been for 20 months. And so he's really personally like a brother almost to me or not even almost he's like a brother to me and so working with someone that you're that close with and someone that understands you as a producer is it's just so easy that it's um you know it, it's reminiscent of working with Aaron in the studio and him producing my Aaron used to always not even Aaron would always sort of when I would be singing a lead with the Crab Family Days and Aaron's my brother um Aaron was always kind of in behind the the other side of the window and Aaron's so great at producing a vocal and Blaine's that it's the same way it's just effortless and you trust them and so I was able to say Blaine you know push me or you know I'm, I'm open you know it's there's a trust level that's there that I think um when you're working and because singing is so vulnerable in the studio right like it's so vulnerable and um so there's a trust level with Blaine that he knows me from being out on tour so much that he knows she can do that better or, you know, she's got another one in her. So that is just amazing on a personal level. But also the song, Blaine brought a lot of these songs in and like the new name written in glory, which is the only new song on the album because we thought, you know, let's do one new one. And I don't know that I would have ever heard that song and thought I should cut it. I didn't hear me singing that song, but Blaine heard it and said, you, you've got it. You brought it to me and said, you have to do this song. And at first I was like, are you sure? And of course now it's literally one of my favorite songs to sing right now. Yeah. And I'm, I'm so glad to have people around me that will stretch me um, in the best way. And, you know, when you're 44 years old, you don't realize you can still be, you can still be pushed and you can still grow and you can still stretch. There's still, you know, you, you shouldn't put, I think sometimes I put perimeters around myself and what a blessing and a gift to have people in my life that won't let me do that. Sure. That, that forced me to grow musically, you know, Blaine's just the kind of person who's so talented. You're not, not going to be around him and not grow musically. So that's such a gift. So he was, he helped pick material he arranged everything. He actually brought uh, in the sweet vine by and he, and he brought it to me and he said, this is kind of what I hear for this. And he started playing on the piano and he said, it reminds me of Bruce Hornsby. And I, if you're as old as I am, you know, <laughs> Bruce, I grew up and he was on the radio right. and I instantly fell in love with it. And he said, you know, I hear like a, maybe a duet, like maybe Jason. And he kind of brought all these ideas. And so um, he's a dream to work with is if you know Blaine you know I'm telling the absolute truth he's just he's so talented but so humble just a great combination yeah I, I remember the first time I ever I ever uh, heard him was uh, when he was touring with Aaron and Amanda um, yeah. and playing the piano for them and I went uh, they, they came to the to our uh, big fan festival we did every year Aaron and Amanda and, and it was during sound checks and he just started singing and I was just like who is this kid you know, like, yeah. where did he come from? You know, and it's just the talent moves from him. And, Great singer. And, uh, yeah. yeah, and so that that's so exciting to hear that. But I know this is kind of almost, this record is almost like a family reunion in sorts to you. Yeah. You know, like uh, a lot of just your family uh, was here. So tell tell us a little bit about who is also on the album. Um, so so yeah. get them excited about it. So I was very adamant, I'll say this. I love a good solo record, but I like variety. And yeah. There are very few people that I'm like, I only want to hear them for 10 songs. Right. It, I mean, like maybe Celine Dion, you uh -huh. know, I just love a good variety. So I'm like, okay, I want this to have lots of personality and lots of variety. I'm, I've always sang in a group. It's really who I am. So um, that was, you know, 
That was something we knew from the get go. So of course, all of my family, the crab family, um, I couldn't do it without having all of them on there. I just, I couldn't do it, you know, right. and it's hard to chase everybody down. Everybody's extremely busy, but I was very persistent. We're, we're going to get everybody on something. And uh, Tara, I think we got on too. So she's a good sister, but, um, <laughs> uh, so all of my family's on there. And then, uh, Ben Isaacs is on there. All the Isaacs, uh, Ben, Becky and Sonia are all on there. Uh, of course, my daughters, Hope, Kate and Grace are on there. And then Charlotte Ritchie, who I've just always loved her. I mean, since I was about 16 years old, I've been a huge, just loved her voice since, sure. since I first heard her. Yeah. And she was gracious and came in and sang on a song. Um, Blaine is on it. Um, did I forget anybody? I think that's, I think that's it. Of course I have um, Angie Prim and Gail um, who sing a lot of backgrounds. If you, if you know about backgrounds in Nashville, yeah. you know them sure. and they, they, are on it pretty heavily a lot of the back and they are phenomenal yeah so i'm in really really good really good company yeah it's almost like it could have been a like a sister's record you know because you hear yeah. so many of those strong female voices and yes. and uh it, it's just it's so good and and uh like i said if, if people haven't heard it they've got to go you know it, it's gonna be available everywhere and um so tell now that we talked about the record i do want to hear a little bit i know you talked a little bit about the book um, but tell us a little, first of all, uh, from the marketing guy here, the name of the record and the name of the book is just pure genius. I want to know who came up with, this is my story and this is my song. I'll give um, you one guess. Was it Kathy? Was yeah. it Kathy Canna? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Right. Of course. <laughs> the marketing genius, right? Uh, so yes. I love that, but tell us a little bit about the book, um, you know, and, uh, of course how people can get it. Well, you can go to my website to get it, Kelly Crab and the bowling sisters.com and that's two B's and crab. Um, the book was really just sort of almost, it, it's a personal little journey, a walk with me through um, from January, 2021 until long ago. Um, and honestly, it's just to be real and honest, it's a walk through the hardest time of my life. The most devastating. I went through a very unexpected um, divorce um, a public divorce, um, where we were in ministry. Um, and it's not a, it's not a, I'm going to air my dirty laundry kind of book. It's a book of how do you keep moving forward, especially in ministry? Yeah. Um, how, how do you keep going when the thing that you think can't happen to you happens to you? That's really, the book has always been, I'm sorry, I have a dog here. I'm so sorry. Um, the book has always been uh, from the time that I decided to do the book, it's always my prayer and hope was that it would really speak to people that were in the lowest moment of their life, the low, the, the absolute um, lowest moment um, where you just don't know how you're going to get up and keep moving, where you literally, how do I get out of bed today? How do I keep going? Um, nothing makes sense kind of moments. And it's very raw. It's real, um, but I personally believe that God uses you most when you're honest um, and when you're able to say, this is not what I thought it was going to be. You know what I'm saying? I feel right. like God uses those moments when you're, uh, when you just will say, I'm going to be really real about this. I don't get this. I don't understand it. So that's the book's just sort of a reflection of that time. And it's honestly just a, a walk through it. It literally goes through the months of from the moment I realized that my life was never going to be the same yeah. to deciding to pick up the pieces and keep going. Do I keep in ministry? Am I allowed to stay in ministry? Sure. Um, is it over? Uh, will anybody want me now that it's changed? Um, yeah. Those kinds of those kinds of decisions and thoughts and how to how to navigate it, you know? Yeah. Well, and, and talk to us a little bit about that, uh, Kelly, about the transition from uh, group Kelly to now solo Kelly or, uh, you know, solo ministry Kelly. Now, of course, your girls do travel with you. Of course, they sing with you some, but a good chunk of it is you, you know, yeah. you on the stage, you know, t tell us what that help us understand how that transition has gone for you and and then where where it's taking you. Well, it's been I mean, honestly, it's a it's the scary when I say that I can't say it enough. I wasn't the person sitting around going, Ooh, I hope I do a solo record someday. Oh, that's just not me. 
Like I just never was that, whatever the word is that that is, that's just never really been who I am. Yeah. And, um, and I don't say that to try to look like I'm super humble. It's just, it, it's just, I was, I'm, I'm one of those people that I'm pretty easily content and I've always been very blessed to be around such great singers um, from my brothers to my marriage to that. I always thought, man, I'm just happy to be here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I just, I get to sing and with these great people to Tara. And so anyway, um, not something I sat around and dreamed about the, the idea for a solo record kind of uh, Blaine who produced it during the pandemic had sort of mentioned to me, everybody was bored during their pandemic. Everybody was like, what do we do? We have too much time on our hands. And so Blaine had sort of said to me, you know, if you ever do something, I'm, I want to be a part. I, he had no agenda whatsoever, except I'm your friend. I believe in you if you ever, you know, and so I had talked about writing a journal um, or I always wanted to do a devotional, not a journal. Um, and so back in the pandemic time, I thought, okay, this will be a cute little thing to do. Right. And then life unfolded. We kind of started going back to saying, I didn't get it finished. And, um, of course God knows God always knows and life unfolded. And by January, 2021, everything had kind of changed. So, but to be in solo, I've, I've spoken at women's conferences for many, probably seven or eight years now. Um, I've always felt uh, I, I've always enjoyed sharing my testimony and sharing about the goodness of God and um, maybe even more so than singing. Sometimes I, I feel very fulfilled to be able to share and minister to women on a personal level. Mm -hmm. So um, this solo thing kind of does, it goes along with the women's ministry that I've done and the, the women's conferences and it, sort of all falls into place and you look back and you see, Oh God had sort of this, he, God's always a step ahead. Right. So right. as I was getting at ease more and more speaking at women's conferences, then all of a sudden here I am um, in this ministry kind of by myself and it's scary, but um, it, it's a lot less scary than it was a year ago. Yeah. And um, I, the payday is when women come up to you um, and men sometimes too, but a lot of women, or I get messages a lot, especially since the book's been out of women that are, that say things like you, you, you have no idea. Um, you're saying what I wish I could say. Thank you for saying the thing that I didn't know how to say, or um, it's good to know I'm not alone and that somebody else has walked a lonely road, a desperate road. So Chris, it's been the scariest season of my life, but in some ways the most rewarding season of my life because it truly is God. I know it's God and I couldn't do, I, I wouldn't be here if, if he wasn't totally helping me. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. It's just, it's just uh, uh, like uh, I was talking to your mom yesterday and I was just talking about how just how awesome it is to see like nobody wants to have to walk through what you had to walk through, right? But then yeah. on the other side of it, to see how God is moving and changing and you're coming out a different person, your girls are coming out different people that are being fulfilled in new ways um, with his plan in mind. And, and I told her, I was like, you can't help but be smiling, I'm sure, and beaming that even though they walk through this, they're coming out stronger, like you're like, yeah. you know, like her, her things, you know, her, yep. her conferences are. And so um, uh, I, as, as, you know, somebody who's followed your ministry for 20 years, you know, it's, it's so cool to see 20 years later, you're still adapting and changing in new ways uh, in your relationship with God. And it's, it's amazing. And so Thank I you. applaud you for continuing to, um, you know, to follow where he's leading, you know? And so mm -hmm. I'm sure this is going to be a very tough question because I'm going to, I'm going to end the interview. Like I always do. I've been doing this for 20 years. I ask the same question every time <laughs> I've probably asked you this question a couple of times um, already as well, but it's simply, what is God teaching you uh, right now? Oh, God's, I feel like he's teaching me a lot. Um, you know, I, I've said this a few times when I speak, and this might seem so silly to some, but um, as a person who tried to play by the rules her whole life and playing by the rules 
and I don't mean I was perfect. I mean, I'm just kind of a rule fault. I've always tried to sort of play by the rules. Same. I don't have yeah. a big story of my rebellion. Right. You know, right. Same and here. that, that doesn't mean I don't always tell people don't get it wrong. I'm not better than you. I was right. scared. I was scared. Right. If I have my mama put the fear of God in me, <laughs> you know? And so I've just sort of tried to play by the rules. And I think sometimes when you play by the rules, you think you, you subconsciously think you're earning God's goodness and his grace. Yeah. And I have learned that after I've, I've, as I've watched life just simply fall apart and all the questions that go through your mind of why that you start going, what did I do? What did I, you know, I've learned that the goodness of God is so not based on our, on our works, right. on anything we did right. Because there, when you go through a traumatic, horrible um, betrayal, it you'll see the very best of yourself, and there'll be days you'll see the worst of yourself. You deal with more emotions than words can express. I'm learning the the goodness of God, even on the days that you feel like, oh, I didn't handle it right today. Yeah. Because you have to give yourself grace as you walk through grief that you're not always going to handle it yeah. right. That there'll be days that you see a side of yourself. And I don't mean I'm out here going crazy. I just mean there are days you have to deal with anger. And I've never really been an angry person. And I've had to fight anger. And I've had to fight all the things that go with it. Grief magnifies every emotion you have. Yeah. And I've learned about a lot about God's grace and a lot about his goodness and his faithfulness and that he understands in ways that we can't imagine. I always knew God loved us and cared for us, but I've said this a lot. God sees us. And there that's a, that's a whole nother level of just beyond his love. So I think he, he, he's taught me so much about trusting him and just how much he really loves me. You know, I yeah. think um, I've always lived my life thinking, oh, I need to earn the love. I need to earn. I think it comes from not being overly confident. I think it comes from not feel like oh, I'm the most, this person in the room. You know, I'm not the most talented person in the room. I'm not this or that. And realizing at 44, God is not concerned with any of that. He just wants us. He just wants us. Right. Just the way we are. He loves us, truly loves us for who we are. And so it's been really kind of um, empowering. And there's a certain level of freedom sure. in experiencing that. Right. That's, that's, so, that's so awesome. Um, uh, so before we go, um, I, do, I did, of course, want to ask about the girls. Uh, what's, what's the story? Is there a new record coming out for them? It's going to happen soon. Yes. They, they've just cut a single, um, okay. just separate, just, just because they, they had been doing a song and it's getting so much great feedback, but yeah, a record's definitely right around the corner for them. And listen, they are so ready. <laughs> they are so excited. Um, and they're, they're at that age where they're just vocally. And, um, I remember when my brother's, and Tara and I were this age, you're just like a sponge. Yeah. And like you see them one time and I hear this from people all the time and somebody will see them six months later and they're like, Oh my gosh, they're like different. They've grown so much. Right. Yeah. You know, where it's just like, you just grow so quickly in your gifts. So that for me, because I've been there so exciting for them. Yeah. But I've, I've always been a fan, you know, so uh, they're going by, they're going by hope, hope, Kate and grace now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's that's cool, um, and it's cool to see them uh, venturing in new territories as well. They hit all kinds of styles, and it's always fun to listen to them sing and um, give them our love, of course. But um, before we go, uh, let everybody know how they can contact you. I know you're doing in-house booking now as well, so um, how let everybody know how they can get in touch with you, how they can buy your stuff, how they can book you, all of that. Okay, so just go to Kelly Crab and the Bowling Sisters. That's the website, dot com. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, same name. Um, you can find us on Instagram, uh, Kelly, uh, May Crab on Instagram is mine. Um, you can just search in the, 
the search. Um, 615-572-5172 is how you can book us. Um, and we'll, we'll get back to you and we're staying, uh, busy, but we're booking for next year. Okay. And so we would love to be a part of love doing women's conferences. We love, we go, to, we go everywhere, literally everywhere. So, and if you have, you know, younger people, um, the girls are such a great addition to, to, you know, they're, they're young. So, right. so yeah. they're, they're great for stuff like that. We would love to be a part of yeah. anything and everything. Go see you in concert, but most importantly, when they go see you, uh, go to the table and buy something. So yeah. if it's the book, if it's a CD, if it's a t-shirt, I don't care what it is, buy yeah. something because uh, that's how you guys uh, can stay on the road. So yeah. uh, listen to the album on Apple all you want, but then go buy something. So yeah. uh, so anyways, Kelly, it has been fantastic, of course, catching up with you. Uh, we text occasionally, right. but it's always nice getting to to see your face and hear your voice. And so um, I'm so glad you came with us. This is my song is the CD. This is my story is the book. And you guys have to get it. Um, hear her story. It's amazing. And support this wonderful group. Thank you again, Kelly. Thank uh, you, Chris. We, we love you guys. And we will love you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.